Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read in October. <laughs> So I read a lot of books in the month of October. I think if this is the most books I've ever read in a month this year yet, which is crazy to me because it's winding down the end of the semester and I'm surprised I read so many books. But it's honestly because most of them were ebooks. So Audible Escape was ending. That was the last month of Audible Escape. I've canceled my Audible membership. I've been an Audible member for many years and I ended up canceling it because um, I'm saving up money to go on a trip in January. I have Libby. Libby is free. Um, Libby is an audiobook service through your library, by the way. So I ended up canceling my Audible membership. I don't have Audible anymore, but I wanted to listen to as much on Audible Escape as possible. So that's what I did in the month of October. So I had a few readathons going on in the month of October as well. <laughs> Whenever I talk about a book, I'm gonna tell y'all what readathon it was for if it was a part of a readathon. 25 of them were audiobooks and seven of them were ebooks. So I didn't have any physical books to read in the month of October, which uh, my one goal for 2020 was to read more physical books, read books, actually read a book <laughs> with my eyeballs and not on my phone. <laughs> that didn't happen in October at all, but that's okay. Crunch time with school and everything. Still haven't read a physical one in November, so <laughs> I don't blame myself. We're going to be going for my least favorite to my favorite reads of the month. Also, I'm gonna try and keep this video as short as possible. I know I've been making like kind of long videos recently. <laughs> I don't know if y'all want that or not. Please let me know if you want shorter videos or longer videos, I don't know. But like there are 32 books on this list. I don't wanna talk about a book for a minute each. So um, if it's a part of a readathon or it's in a vlog, I'm just gonna tell y'all it's in that vlog. And if you wanna know my full on detailed thoughts, go watch that video. Also, I just wanna say that I've gotten into writing like Goodreads reviews now, like almost every single book that I've read in the month of October has a review. So if you wanna know more thoughts other than what I'm saying now, go check out my Goodreads, which is linked down below. So without further ado, let's get started. So my least favorite book in the month of October was Wild Hearts by Kimber White. Um, I gave this book one star and I read it during the Kindle Clear Out Readathon that I was a co-host for. Um, so go check out that vlog if you wanna know why I gave it one star. This filled the prompt for oldest book on my TBR and I had this in my Kindle library, obviously, cause it was the oldest book in my Kindle library. It was one of, not the, it's one of the oldest ones that I've had. Really bad shifter romance, so don't recommend it at all. Next, I have The Forbidden Passion of a Governess by Lucy Langton. Um, I also read some of this during the Kindle Clear Out Readathon. I ended up giving this book two stars and this is an ebook that I read. This one gave me huge Jane Eyre vibes um, at the beginning and then it just turned to utter poo. Like it was really bad. My main gripe about it, well, I have a bunch of gripes about it. Again, you can check out my uh, Goodreads review for this book and my Goodreads is linked down below if you wanna check it out. But uh, the hero overall was just mean. And like the heroine, like she knew that he was like in the wrong of being mean, but she never like stood up for herself. And she said she was going to, and then like he'd come in to like do something with her and then she'd forget about confronting him about it. And then like, it just got brushed off. And that happened a bunch in this book. It's just like not, not my thing. Then we have Gilded Rose by Emma Hamm. I ended up getting this off of Kenza Unlimited and I ended up giving it two stars, which is so sad. I love Emma Hamm, you guys. She wrote one of my favorite Beauty and the Beast retellings called Heart of the Fae. I love that book. She's an amazing fantasy romance writer. I love her. This one, for some reason, just did not do it for me. Like the summary for this book is just like, it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. It's a very unique Beauty and the Beast retelling, but like you can read my Goodreads review. Again, it's just like, I don't want to go too in depth, but like when I read a book, I read it within a week. Normally I read a book within two days or three days. I very rarely takes me a whole week to read. This book took me, I believe a whole month to read a whole month to read this 300 page book. This also shouldn't have been 300 pages. I didn't like the characters. The hero did not grovel enough because he did some horrible things and is not groveling enough at all. Just not my thing, which is really sad because I love Emma Hamm. She just came out with a Hades and Persephone one. I got an arc for it and I'm so excited to read it. So hopefully that one's really good, but I don't think I'm gonna be continuing on with this series, unfortunately. Then I read The Choices I've Made by J.L. Berg. I got this one off of Audible Escape and I also ended up giving this one two stars. So this one is a second chance romance book. Like our hero and heroine were sweethearts in high school. And then like he ended up 
leaving the town because he hates the town that they live in and they ended up breaking up and then he comes back when his father dies and that's when the book like starts out is when his father dies he comes back to like take care of everything it's them like reconnecting it wasn't good i was super disappointed in this book overall i didn't care about this book i didn't care about the characters at all like at all their relationship zero chemistry I didn't understand the relationship at all or why they liked each other or why they were lo in love with each other still. Like there's this whole thing about this character named Dean. There was a whole like debacle with him like at the beginning, like this book was just not good. It, uh, it's either I hate a jailbreak book or I love a jailbreak book. There's no in between for me it seems um, because I have loved her first book that she wrote and then a couple of other ones that she's written. I did not like this at all. I'm sorry. Don't recommend it. Then I read um, Chosen by the Vampire Kings by Charlene Hart Nady. Um, I ended up giving this three stars. I listened to this on Audible Escape and this was for the Kindle Clear Out Readathon. I also have this on my Kindle. I have it in ebook form. That's why it was for the Kindle Clear Out Readathon, but it was also on Audible Escape, so I just listened to it. Charlene Hart Nady writes a lot of um, paranormal romances. I read some dragon books by her that were really fun. I just decided to pick up one of her vampire books. This one is about a woman who, um, um, she lives in this town where like vampire kings like rule over the town. I think there's two different vampire kings. There's like this ceremony. They gather everybody in the village or the town or whatever to this like meeting and the vampire kings like stand on the stage and like look at the crowd and figure it out like, ooh, who's my mate? And so uh, one of the vampire kings chooses our heroine and then the other vampire king chooses somebody else and then she thinks and the heroine thinks that the other vampire king that didn't choose her is evil the other vampire king who didn't choose her his person that he chose ends up dying for some reason and you figure out why turns out he's like claiming that she's also his mate and both of them are claiming that they're her mate and so it's an mfm paranormal romance so uh it was a little bit all over the place in my opinion. <laughs> it was kind of confusing at points, this book. Um, I ended up giving it three stars because it was entertaining. I really liked it. It was, real, it was well written. It was just confusing sometimes. There was a bunch of cringy moments for me. <laughs> I don't like cringy moments in books. So uh, yeah, only gave this one three stars. Then I ended up reading The Decadent Gift by Lauren Blakely. This is a book number three in this series. I forget the series name, but um, I also listened to this one off of Audible Escape and I ended up giving it three stars. I honestly don't remember what this book is about. The summary is escaping me. This is a romance where our two characters like just decide to um, hook up for a weekend together. That'll be it. And then they, after the weekend, they both realize that they don't just want one weekend together. They want forever together. And so it's that kind of book. I just thought it was mediocre. Not the best thing ever written. Um, this plot gets used a lot. Um, just nothing new. So three stars for me. Next, I ended up reading Treasure of the Abyss by Tiffany Roberts. This is the first book in the Kraken series and I really want to continue on with the series. They're really fun. These are alien romance books um, where our... <laughs> Where one of the hero, where one of the characters is a kraken, <laughs> so there's tentacles and everything. I read this book because of Kayla from On the Fritz. She loves this series. I listened to this off of Audible Escape. I ended up giving it three stars. So again, alien romance. Um, this woman gets on this boat with a man who's about to propose to her, but she doesn't like feel anything for him. And then like she gets in like a shipwreck. Um, they both end up surviving, but she ends up getting saved by a kraken who witnesses everything. And like, he goes and saves her, but he like kind of like keeps her in this like cave that she can't escape from. And is like, um, you can't go back to your people because no one's supposed to know that the krakens exist. So I can't let you go back because then you're gonna tell everybody that we exist. Turns out they may or may not uh, fall for each other through all of this. <laughs> in my country to view, I was basically like, this was really fun, I really liked it. Um, the only reason why I maybe gave it three stars is just because I'm a dumb person and like I didn't really understand a lot of the alien jargon going on. I was really confused. I wish I, I wish there was just more like definitions for terminology <laughs> in the book. I, my brain was just not handling it at the moment, if you know what I mean. Overall, this book was really fun. I really recommend it. If you want like a fun alien romance book, here you go. Then I ended up reading The Fire Between High and Low by Brittany C. Cherry, there we go. Um, I listened to this one off of Audible Escape. I gave it three stars. Um, this is my least favorite in the Elements series. This is me finally completing the Elements series. This is my least favorite by far. So this takes place in two different time periods. One time when our characters are in high school and then it jumps to when they are adults. So in high school, Lo, who's um, 
Logan, probably that's his name, I think, which is weird because that's my sister's name. And then there's the love interest. I don't remember her name, but his nickname for her is High because she gives him a high for being with him or whatever. There is a ba major trigger warning for substance abuse in this book and just like alcoholism and drug addiction. I'm just not for reading about that stuff. Like I, it doesn't appeal to me at all reading about that stuff. I didn't really understand why they loved each other so much. So basically, oh, I didn't really explain what this book's about. So um, they meet when they're in high school, they become best friends. Something happens to where our hero gets put in this facility far away from everybody else and then it's years later when he's gotten out of there and he has never returned to the town since. Just like the conflicts in here were really bad, really cringy. <laughs> I didn't really like it. I mean like it, the writing was like good. It's Brittany C. Cherry. I love her but like I didn't believe the romance like at all because he was a horrible piece of crap for most of this book. Then I ended up reading A Wilderness of Glass by Grace Draven. This cover is absolutely gorgeous. Man, I wish like the cover represented how good the book was though, because unfortunately I gave this three stars. I read this on Kindle. I think I got it for like 99 cents possibly. I don't know if it's still that price, but I love Grace Draven. If you couldn't tell, probably my favorite romance book of all time was written by her and I've been wanting to read more of her backlist. And so this was a short 100 page fantasy book. I believe it takes place possibly in the same world as um, Radiance, possibly. So this one is about a woman and she is a widow. When she is collecting seaweed on the beach one day, she stumbles across a merman and a child like on land dying because they were attacked by something and she ends up like saving them and everything. And the merman ends up coming back to um, like be with her and communicate with her and get to know her more and possibly fall in love with her. The premise was so amazing. Like I was still looking forward to this. Unfortunately, it just let me down. Like there wasn't a lot to do with the romance between the two of them. It had a lot to do with a side character who was our conflict in the story. And um, I didn't really feel like that conflict was needed at all. I just wanted a fun romance between a woman and a merman. <laughs> and like the ending, ooh, the ending really let me down. I wish there was more to the ending so much, but overall, if y if this sounds interesting to you, you might like it. It just unfortunately let me down. Then I ended up reading Dust Walker by Tiffany Roberts. I also listened to this on Audible Escape and I ended up giving it three stars. This is a post-apocalyptic romance book where our hero is a cyborg and our heroine is a very poor human woman. And so in this land, cyborgs have taken over the world. They like control everything. And so they control the cities that humans live in. Our hero is a cyborg who's kind of like on the outs. He's kind of like an outlier with all of them. He's trying to find his purpose in life because each cyborg has a purpose in life and he doesn't know his. He stumbles across this woman dancing. Like just free. she doesn't think anybody's watching and she's dancing. And um, he's like, oh my gosh. I love the way she dances or like I am entranced by this woman why am I entranced by this woman and like he ends up helping her with everything and like it's just a romance between the two of them overall the romance just developed way too fast in my opinion I wanted more tension and more development because it's kind of like she hates him because he's a cyborg and cyborgs ruin the world um <laughs> so I just wanted more from it if that makes sense but over it was okay I would love to get a new like a book in the, or like another book in the series that'd be really fun. Um, the ending gutted me. <laughs> the ending gutted me. Wow. I like the premise and everything. It's just like the romance just wasn't all that believable and it was too fast for me. Next I ended up reading Butterface by Avery Flynn. I listened to this one off of Audible Escape and I gave it three stars. This is about a man and a woman who meet at a wedding because she's a wedding planner and he is maybe the best man. I don't know. He's a cop. Um, but our heroine's brothers are like in like the drug business or like the mafia business and like he's trying to find them to arrest them or question them. Our heroine has been known all of her life as Butterface because like she has like good, people tell her she has a good body but sh her face is ugly. Which is sad that people have said that to her all of her life. The two of them get on a kiss cam and they end up kissing and they like both develop feelings for each other but she doesn't think that he'd ever like genuinely want to be with her because of the way that she looks and he's just like what? I don't care. <laughs> you know, like I, I like the way that you look. What the heck? This book just wasn't memorable to me at all. I just didn't like how she kept like putting herself down all the time. And like, that was the whole conflict and the whole conflict with her brothers and everything just wasn't for me. This might be for you though. I really like the other books in this series. This one just isn't it. Then I ended up reading Aries by 
Gemma James. Um, I gave this one 3.5 out of 5 stars. I read this during the Kindle Claret Readathon and this was off of my Kindle library so I read it as an ebook. This one is really interesting. It is a romance where our heroine when she was uh, like 11 or 12 her parents ended up dying and her uncle ended up getting custody of her and she's actually a princess. He signs this contract with this neighboring land that is like at the age of 18 our heroine novelly will um be sent to um, like the zodiac island and like each floor of this island is a different zodiac. Each month she will um, have to live with and do whatever the um, man leader of that zodiac sign says and by the end like that's for 12 months out of the year she'll be with a new person and um at the end of the 12 months there is going to be an auction for her but she still has to be a virgin by the end of everything so each book is less than 100 pages i've only read book one they're really interesting though um this one just was like it's just it's a novella so a lot of stuff happens fast and just like she developed feelings for our hero very quickly and i don't know it just wasn't for me um, in that sense but I find the premise super interesting so I'm very interested to possibly continue on with the series. Then I ended up reading The Virgin Gift by Lauren Blakely. I gave this book 3.5 out of 5 stars and listened to this one off of Audible Escape. Now this one is about a photographer like a boudoir is it boudoir boudoir photographer she takes like steamy pictures of people and she's actually like a virgin even though she's um takes steamy pictures of people and she's very well like versed in her sexuality she knows what she wants from a man she has her neighbor staying with her in her house because his his home is being remodeled so she's like oh you can just come stay with me whatever and so he stays with her and then one day he comes across a list that she's made of things she wants to do when she finds like a trusting person to like take her virginity and he's like I want to be that person and so they go through this list of things to do. It was very steamy. I had a lot of fun reading it. Then I ended up reading Untouchable by Cressley Cole, the seventh book I believe in the Immortals After Dark series by Cressley Cole and um, I gave this book 3.5 out, out of 5 stars. I listened to this one off of Libby and I read it during the Paranormal Romance Readathon and this filled the prompt for Faded Mates. Um, I just posted my readathon vlog if you want to know my in-depth thoughts. Go check out that video. Then I ended up reading One Cruel Night by K.A. Lindy. I gave this book 3.75 out of 5 stars. I read this during the Kindle Claret Readathon. Um, this is in my Kindle library. This filled the prompt for the newest book on your Kindle. This is a one night stand romance. Again, if you want to know my in-depth thoughts, go check out my Kindle Clear Out Readathon vlog. Then I ended up reading Bottle Rocket by Eric McLean possibly. That's how you pronounce her name. I'm so sorry. I got this off of Kindle Unlimited and I gave it a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I got this recommendation from Izzy from Happy For Now and this is a second chance romance where our hero and heroine were like lovers in high school and then they ended up going their separate ways after high school and then they come back together they see each other in their hometown things like spark back up between them and um this was super fun i really liked it our hero is a steamy photographer or steamy no a steamy artist there you go he's a steamy artist i really liked that because i've never like seen that in a book and it was just super fun and they're like exploring things between them is super steamy so if you're not into steamy things don't read this one i believe each book in this series is about a different sibling um like the heroine's siblings and it's all revolved around a holiday i think the first one is like christmas related i don't know what the second one is about this one is fourth of july related so had a lot of fun reading this one then we're going to talk about three books all together first we have the mafia and his angel part one then we have part two and then we have part three all by lila james i listened to all of these on audible escape overall i gave all three of them four stars. These books, whoa, these books have literally every single trigger warning you can think of. Every single trigger warning you can think of. Whoa, these mafia books are insane. They're insane. I recommend them if you're like into dark stuff, but wow. So our book starts out, part one starts out with um, our heroine. She is escaping her fiance. Her dad is in the mafia and he's basically made her be engaged to his right hand man and he has been sexually assaulting her for years. She finally escapes one night and ends up in the car of, I forget his name, but he's another mafia boss. He's like the big bad mafia boss who's like the enemy to her dad. And she ends up in his car somehow while she's escaping. And um, she ends up in his house, like he just, she doesn't know who this man is, but like she's just trying to escape. And so she hides in his house and he ends up finding her. She realizes who he is and she's like, oh crap, this dude's gonna kill me if I tell him who I am. And then like, he doesn't know who she actually is. They end up 
possibly falling in love and she ends up like being a maid in his house whoa these books are super dark steamy but like emotional wow um I really recommend them if you're in for like an emotional roller coaster. Then we have The Engagement Gift by Lauren Blakely. This is the first book a part of that Lauren Blakely series I've been talking about. Um, I gave this one four stars and this was for the Kindle Claire Readathon and I listened to this one off of Audible Escape. So this is about a man and a woman and they are engaged. The man wants to fill his wife or his to-be wife's every single fantasy and um, her fantasy may or may not include another man in the picture just for a night. Um, so it's that one night together. So super duper fun. Then I ended up reading Voyeur by Fiona Cole. Um, I ended up getting this one four stars and listened to it on Audible Escape and this is a romance between a a girl who's in college and her professor. She ends up like needing some money and so her best friend tells you about this place called Voyeur and you can like do stuff with people and like people watch you and you get paid for it. So her professor like sees her one night class hasn't started yet so he doesn't know that this is going to be a student but he sees her and he like kind of like becomes entranced by her and then the first day of class happens and then he realizes who she is and he's like oh crap um so it's that whole dynamic it was really fun i really liked it um it's super steamy so if you're not into steamy things probably skip this one but i'm very much looking forward to continuing on with the series then we have the wild air by karina halley this is the last book that i had to complete a part of that royals series that she's um, written. Wait, no, I think there's a book for it that just came out. So I need to read that one too. But this one is A Marriage of Convenience. And I believe he's the, he might be the um, Prince of Norway or Prince of Sweden. I don't remember. Oh, it's Prince of Denmark or something. I don't remember. He's the Prince of something. Anyway, he's in line for the throne and his dad is like really sick. So our hero is very much known for being a party boy, lady of man, whatever. And um, he gets in this huge debacle at the beginning of the book. And his dad is like, I am sick. You're, you've gone through your whole life like being a playboy. I really need you to settle down and get married and have a princess and have our country look forward to something. And so he gets an, an arranged marriage with this woman and like he doesn't want to be in a marriage at all. And she doesn't either. She doesn't like him because he's like a playboy and everything. But then they like kind of become friends and then they become more than friends. And it's so sweet. And like, I actually really like this one. So I give it four out of five stars. Then I ended up reading Misadventures of a College Girl by Lauren Rowe. Um, I got this recommendation from Brie from In Love and Wars because this is one of her favorite books of all time and she loves Lauren Rowe. This one was honestly really fun. So main character woman, she gets to college and she really wants to lose her v-card and so she goes to this party with her best friend and they're like trying to find the douchiest dude to like just lose her v-card to. There she meets our hero and like um, he like on the way to them to go hook up she like ends up like confessing that she's never done anything like this before and he's like what no i'm not gonna be with you and she's like screw you then like she leaves and then he like realizes how attracted he is to her and he like goes back to like find her and be like um i screwed up i really want to be with you but let's do some stuff before we actually do stuff so you can like have experience but like i want to give be that person to like give you experience if that makes sense so honestly this book was just super funny i was laughing out loud through a lot of this Great banter, great humor, really liked it. Four stars. Then I ended up reading Lady Isabel's Scandalous Marriage by Jennifer Ashley. This is the second book in the Mackenzie's and McBride series. I thought that I would be listening to all of these books in Audible Escape because like I wanna read the rest of these books because I love these characters a lot, but turns out Libby has them all. So I just read the second book before I figured out that all the rest of them are on Libby. This is a historical romance about a woman. She was married to a Mackenzie brother. Um, this is the first book, by the way, it's up here. The Madness of Lori and Mackenzie. This is the second book to that. And so this is about his brother and then his wife. They got married pretty fast, really young, um, because it was like love at first sight kind of thing. But then our hero like becomes like a drunk and it's like, just becomes horrible to our heroine. She's like, I'm leaving you. And it's been three years since she's left him. He's finally like, been sober and changed his ways. And he's also a painter. And I loved that. The painting scenes in this book were so good. <laughs> Honestly, I just wish there were more scenes about what happened like before they were married or like how they were at the beginning of their marriage because we don't really get a lot of those scenes. But overall, I really like this one. Then I ended up reading Tomboy by Avery Flynn. This is the third book in that same series as Butterface that I talked about earlier. I listened to this one off of Audible Escape. I ended up giving it four stars. This is about our heroine. I believe she's a nurse possibly you're studying to become a doctor. I don't really remember. Her best friend is like a PR person when it comes to like a hockey team. Her best friend asks her to go over and take care of her client who um, is like the meanest hockey player in town on this team. And so she goes over to like help him and everything because he might have the flu or something. And like 
he doesn't want the press to know about it and um turns out uh their hate to love romance may spark something even better and i really liked it the banter was really great for me this one was just so much fun and i loved like the hockey aspect interwoven in here so yes overall i really like this book i feel like for this series you can pick and choose whatever you read i recommend book two and book three i don't really recommend book one in my opinion but that's just my opinion. Then I ended up reading Jockro by Sarah Nye. I gave this book four stars and I listened to it on Audible Escape. I loved this one. Okay, so it's about our heroine and she goes to a party with her two best friends on Jockro. And it's like a, basically like, like, like the street that has all the fraternities, you know? It's like, that's a street full of all like the jocks and everything. And um, she goes to this party and she ends up like cock blocking these dudes that are on um, the, is it the hockey team? Is it a hockey team or a football team? I don't know, it's some team. I don't remember what kind of team he's on. She ends up like cock blocking some of these dudes that are honestly like horrible, <laughs> like they suck. Our hero is tasked to kick her out of the party. And so he goes to kick her out of the party and she's like, well, I'm gonna see on this porch and um, wait for my friends to come back. And so he has to stay out there with her so she doesn't come back inside the party. And they end up like starting up conversations with each other. And like they end up becoming like really close friends and they have a party every single Friday. And so this book takes place every single Friday. They like always look forward to meeting each other on the porch and just like sitting on the porch and talking to each other and becoming friends and then more. And it's so sweet and I really liked it. Um, I know some people don't really like our heroine. I actually loved our heroine. <laughs> I thought she was funny and quirky and yeah, I really liked her. So again, four out of five stars. So next we have Marriage for One by Ella Mays. I gave this book four stars, listened to it on Audible Escape, and this is A Marriage of Convenience. Heroine has been wanting to open up this coffee shop for forever, and then our hero, who is really rich, I don't know what he does, but he's like, like one of the richest men in town. So our hero in this story ends up figuring out that she's like in this debacle and she really wants to open up this coffee shop, shop, and so um, he like asks her to be in a marriage of convenience with him and he'll like help her with this coffee shop. It's kind of like hate to love though because they don't really like each other or they don't really know each other. Um, but this was so sweet and cute at the end of the day. I really liked this one. So um, yeah, I gave it four stars. Sorry I'm like rushing through these books, but I'm really tired. <laughs> So if you want to know my end of thoughts, just go check out my Goodreads. Then I ended up rereading Crest by Marissa Meyer. This is the third book a part of the Lunar Chronicles, and this was a buddy read with Deja over at Deja Sor. We've been reading the Lunar Chronicles together, and we love this series so much. This is my favorite book in this series, and this one is a Rapunzel retelling. I love it so much. I love this book. Five out of five stars. If you have not read this series, what are you doing with your life? I love it so much yeah this was a reread for me obviously and i listened to this off of libby i got the libby audiobook for it then i have another reread which is full tilt by emma scott i buddy read this and the sequel with brie from in love and words um i listened to both of them off of audible escape this one is a romance between um, a woman who is a rock star who's kind of like hit rock bottom and she's an alcoholic it's a romance between her and her limo driver jonah is like tasked to be a limo driver for the night and so he like takes her home when she's blackout drunk at the end of her show and like the doors are locked he can't get in the place and he's like oh i'm not just gonna leave this blackout woman on her front porch so she's just gonna come sit on the couch or sleep on the couch in my apartment so he takes her to the apartment and she wakes up and they end up like becoming friends and then they become something more this romance is one of the best romances ever and so i ended up reading all in by emma scott which is the sequel to that which i hadn't read before which is so good also so uh Thank you, Brie, for making me finally read book number two. If you read book number one, you have to read book number two. Five stars. Loved it. I love buddy reading these with Brie so much. So thank you, Brie, for buddy reading them with me. If you're looking for romances that are just like an emotional gut punch, please pick these up. Then I ended up reading Hefty by Jessica Kane. Um, I saw Brie talk about this book and she got the recommendation from Desi from Ginky Reader. And I didn't know Desi talked about this book, but this is originally from her recommendation. And this one is so much fun. I had no idea that I'd give a Jessica Kane book five freaking stars. Short novella romance between um, our hero and heroine and they're in high school. So they're like 18, by the way, if you're not into high school stuff, don't read this one because they get into it in this high school book. Heroine is a cheerleader and our hero is a football player and he's kind of like bigger, as you can tell by the title, hefty. Like, so she is his sister's best friend. And so they've known each other for forever. And like he never thinks that she'll like him because of how big he is and she's like a cheerleader and popular and smart and everything and she's like infatuated and in love with him and so it's just like them like possibly figure out, figuring out their feelings for one another and it's so good you guys like i get it now like this is so good if you want a jessica kane that's actually like good pick this one up because it's good it's on kindle unlimited by the way so yes five stars from me which i never thought i'd say about a jessica kane book lastly we have 
Entreat Me by Grace Draven, which is my favorite book of the month. I gave it five stars and listened to this one off of Audible Escape. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling that was honestly so unique and I loved it. This one is about our heroine. She is a widow. She has her younger sister and her younger sister gets engaged to this man and um, no one knows where this man comes from. She ends up West, like going away with him to his house um, in like a different city and so her sister follows her and they live in this big mansion and it turns out this boy has been like this young man has been cursed and his dad has also um so his dad is the one that like looks kind of like a beast and so it's about our heroine falling in love with the dad it's so good i really enjoyed this one i really recommend it this is like a beauty and the beast retelling i've never really read before and it was just so unique and so much fun and i really 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 enjoyed it so anyways there you have it there's my very 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 long october wrap-up please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye!